Our scripture comes from Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, and it reads as follows. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless, void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated light from darkness. God called the light day, and the night, it was called darkness. And that was the first day. Let's title this, this message, Walk in the Light. This text is one of my favorite texts in the Bible. It's one of my favorite texts because I am a photographer, and photography is all about light. Photo means light. Photography literally means writing with light. And the first thing God does is God writes with light. God separates light from darkness, and God does this because God covered the face of the earth with darkness. And when God saw that the earth was covered with darkness, God knew that Adam and Eve needed some light to do their work. See, actually what God is doing is God is enabling it so that Adam and Eve can literally walk in the light. Like that old song says, walk in the light, walk in the light, walk in the beautiful light. Somewhere the dew drops of mercy shine bright, shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. When you check the biblical record, God's always bringing light into dark places. When the Israelites left Egypt, God gave them a pillar by day and fire by night so that they could walk in the light. The Lord said through the prophet Isaiah, I am the Lord. I've called you in righteousness. Listen to what he says. I've taken you by the hand and kept you. I've given you as a covenant to the people light to the nations. He says, I've given you light. Why did I give you light? To open up the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeons, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. And listen to what Jesus said in John chapter 8, where Jesus says, again, I says, Jesus spoke to them. He says, I am the light of the world. Listen to what Jesus says. Whoever follows me, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. See, light brings life and it enables us to see through the darkness. Light enables us to to see light exposes what's done in the dark by shining on it. To put it another way, light helps us see what we don't see. When you truly study light as portrayed in the scriptures, what you find is that light represents the love of God. Light represents the justice of God. Light represents the righteousness of God. Light represents the power of God. Light represents the presence of God. Light represents the way of God. Light represents the path of God. So we say walk in the light. See, when you walk in the light, you see where God wants to take you. When you walk in the light, you were able to see evil. See, evil doesn't want to be exposed to the light because evil operates in darkness. But when we walk in the light, we're shedding light on injustice. And we're also simultaneously calling out for justice because justice is represented by light. When we walk in the light, we see what God is doing. When we walk in the light, we see what God's doing in the world in liberative ways, and we're able to get on and be about God's agenda. When we walk in the light, we see evil, we expose evil, we confront evil, and we call it out. In the 1960s America, our great nation chose to walk in the light. It was photography that shed light on evil so that we could see. Lee Rayford is clear in her book, Imprisoned in a Luminous Glare, Photography in the African-American Ameri African Freedom Struggle. Dr. Rayford convincingly argues that it was photography that changed the world and made the world see the struggle that African-Americans were facing. 
The images of Bull Connors dogs in Birmingham, Alabama. The images of a bombed out 16th Street Baptist Church. The images of water hoses released on teenagers in Birmingham, Alabama. The images of peaceful protesters being attacked and beaten by police at the foot of the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama. And then the images of Emmett Till, the teenage boy who was murdered in August of 1955 in Money, Mississippi. Emmett Till murdered by two white men, allegedly because this teenage boy had become too friendly to a white woman. Emmett Till had been sent to, sent to money in Mississippi by his mother, Mamie Till Bradley, to spend some time with his family down south. And within a few days of being in Mississippi, he was brutally murdered, his body battered and beaten. And they wanted to have his funeral in money in Mississippi, but his mother said, no, we're not gonna have the funeral in money, Mississippi. His mother did the unthinkable. She said, no. She said, send my baby's body back to Chicago. It was only natural for a mother to choose to grieve privately, but she did the unnatural and chose to grieve publicly, publicly. Mamie Till Bradley said, I want the world to see what they did to my boy. And when that body, when that body, when her son's body arrived in Chicago, she had secured the services of Jet Magazine and the photographer David Jackson. And David Jackson captured images of her son's beat, beaten, bruised, and battered body. He captured images of, of the open casket funeral. And those images fed news outlets around the world. And as a result of those images, the modern day civil rights movement was born. As a result of those images, we had to see, we had chosen not to see and millions of dollars fled into, funneled into civil rights organizations. And then, little did we know that in December of the same year, Rosa Parks said that she couldn't get out of her seat because she couldn't get the images of Mamie Till's boy out of her head. So the images of Emmett Till spoke to Rosa Parks. The images from the civil rights movement spoke to America and we saw the light. As children of God, we are to see the light. We are to shine light into the world. We are to testify to the light. In John chapter one, verses six through 12, these words were penned. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe in him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own and his own people did not accept him. It did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become the children of God. Brothers and sisters, we are the children of God. And as children of God, I believe we are called to testify to the light. We are called to bring light into dark places. We are called to make light shine on the evil that's hidden and operates in darkness. We are called to shine light in dark places where the lights are turned off and where cameras are not allowed. We are called to turn on the light. We're called to turn on the camera and let light shine in darkness so that evil might be exposed. It was Darnella Frazier, a 17 year old teenager who was the light in Minneapolis, Minnesota. 
as, off as Officer David Siobhan kneeled on the neck of George Floyd for eight minutes, Darnella Frazier, a 17-year-old teenager, had the wherewithal to take her cell phone and record that evil act. She was the light. She shed light into darkness. Brothers and sisters, that's what I believe that's all God calls us to do. God calls us to shed light on injustice. God calls us to do what Darnella Frazier did, to bring light into dark places, to expose evil, to call it out. We wouldn't have seen that act if it had not been for Donella Frazier. Even though we as African Americans know this has been going on in our community as long as we've been in America. But America had to look. And now the world has seen and the world is reacting. The world is shedding light. And that's what God calls us to do as people of God to be a light, to shed light on injustice, to call it out, confront it, and to hold perpetrators accountable. So I say to you, my brothers and my sisters, walk in the light, that beautiful light. Come where the dewdrops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.